Hey, hey, this video is going to be an introduction to ejection fraction, uh, how to calculate it, and why we care about it um, in medicine. Uh, typically, ejection fraction is calculated for us on something called an echocardiogram, which is uh, when you take an ultrasound of the heart. Um, an ultrasound being like the same device that you use to look at babies inside of a mom, pregnant mom's uterus, right? So uh, normally that advanced device called an echocardiogram can um, tell us the, the ejection fraction without having to calculate it, but it is important to understand the science behind it. So first of all, what is it? Well, um, as you know, the heart has two, two uh, stages to it, right? Two phases. The first one, uh, let's just say the first one for the sake of this is going to be called systole. And the second one is going to be called diastole. We're just calling them first and second just because we have to call them something. So systole is the active part. It's when it's contracting. So like if this was a bag and this was in the heart and it was full of blood during systole, this thing would squeeze and all this blood would then be forced out, right? So that's your heart pumping. Diastole is then after it squeezes, or draw like a squeezed heart and it's all empty. After it squeezes, it then relaxes and blood can come back into it because it's empty. So then it starts filling back up in diastole and then the process repeats itself. Now that it's full, we can have another systolic event where we eject all this blood and squeeze it out. So like this squeezing is going to be called systole and this relaxing and passive filling is going to be called diastole. All right, we're all on the same page there. Um, so now ejection fraction. Well, we already know it's going to be a, a fraction. It's going to be a percentage, and we know it has to do with the ejection. So let's just uh, say we're going to talk just about systole. So in systole, remember, that was the first one earlier, but I guess we could be the second one. We have our bag. It's filled with blood, and now we want to eject it. We want to squeeze this and pump so that blood exits. Now what we want to know with the ejection fraction is, how much blood in here is going to be shot out? What part gets ejected? Now, it's a common misconception that a, blood, that a heart completely uh, ejects all the blood. It completely empties itself with each contraction. And that's not true, especially with some conditions that we can get, like congestive heart failure. But <clears throat> what does happen is at the end of diastole, so that passive filling, I'll draw it like a bucket. During diastole, this bucket fills up at the end of it, we get what's called an EDV. And what does that stand for? It stands for end diastolic volume. So at the end of diastole, at the end of the passive filling, we have a certain amount of blood inside of our ventricle, right? So end diastolic volume. And whatever that blood is, whatever that amount is, is going to be EDV. Let's call it 100 something, just for right now. So there's 100 somethings inside there, let's say milliliters, there's 100 milliliters inside there. Then during a, a stroke or a, a contraction of the heart, we have what's called a stroke volume. And what that means is then when this heart muscle contracts and it pumps, you all can probably picture in your head a, a heart pumping and this blood gets forced out, whatever amount gets forced out here, whatever amount of milliliters gets forced out into the bloodstream, into the aorta, that is the stroke volume. So let's just say for the sake of whatever, that this amount that got forced out is 50 milliliters. So now we have 50 milliliters ejected and we have 50 milliliters left inside of our heart. Um, and this is where the fraction of this uh, concept comes from because the ejection fraction is the amount is the fraction of the blood that was in there that gets pushed out. So here we have 50 out of 100 got pushed out. This would give us an ejection fraction of, you guessed it, 50%. And that's why it's important because <clears throat> that percentage, without having to go through the math, without having to look and, you know, oh, this guy's a little bit bigger, this, this girl's a little bit smaller, so it's 101 milliliters instead of 100 milliliters or whatever, the actual volumes, the absolute volumes don't matter. What matters is how effective is that heart out of how much blood that that ventricle holds is it ejecting currently with each stroke. Now there are stroke to stroke differences, like there are contraction to contraction differences, like one contraction might be really strong because you know your heart thinks that you're on a treadmill so it's pumping more. Um, 
that sort of thing, but they're very minute, and usually each stroke volume is going to be about the same. Um, another concept is cardiac output that we'll talk about in a different, in a different lecture. But suffice to say that ejection fraction is however much blood is inside your ventricle that gets pumped out. That's the ejection fraction. Now, normal values, um, you want to be anywhere from like 55 to 70%. So our theoretical patient who only had the 50% has a little bit of like what we would call like heart failure or there might be something else going on like um, you know aortic stenosis or some reason why the heart is not pumping as efficiently as it should. So the heart should be able to consistently push out at least 55% of that which is holding, of that blood which is holding. Again, I want to make note that the upper range for maximum is 70%. So only 70% maximum, typically, can be pumped out of the ventricle, out of the heart. So it's never, the heart is never completely empty and there's always gonna be some sort of tension or stress on the wall of the ventricle because there'll always be you know, like at least 30% of its full amount inside there. Hopefully that makes sense. That's an instruction to uh, ejection fraction. The big equation there is stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume equals ejection fraction. There you have it. Thank you.